Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Bean here, and today I'm coming at you with what ultimately will be a very short video, and that is my April wrap-up for 2021. For the month of April, I managed to read five books, look at me go! <laughs> it's better than zero, I'll take it right now. Um, and then I do have my stats here, so let's go through them really quickly. Oh, I didn't do my math again. So, as I have said, I managed to read five books this month. Um, one of them was between 201 and 300 pages. Three of them were between 301 and 400 pages. And one book was between 601 and 700 pages. Look, I, I read a long book, guys. The total number of pages that I read this month was 1,956. The longest book that I read this month um, was 624 pages, and the shortest was 278 pages. As far as the ratings go, I gave three of these five star, one a 3.5 star, and one a three star. For the authors, two were from the US and three were from the UK. Of these authors, three were female and two were male. As far as genre goes, two of these books were contemporary, one was fantasy, one was a horror slash thriller, and one was a magical realism story. And then as far as age group goes, three were YA and two were adult books. I also did a bit of writing, not a lot, but a, a solid little bit. Yeah, no, sorry guys, sorry. I, I, I don't really know what happened to the month of April. It was my birthday month, but that doesn't really mean a lot usually. Um, but yeah, I just, I just didn't read much in April. I don't have a reason for it, I just didn't. I don't know. The first book that I managed to read in the month of April was The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. This is a bit of a And Then There Were None spinoff, which it really wasn't, honestly, as I read it, it really wasn't. Um, but it was a group of friends from school who were from, like, college, the university, who were all invited together. They were couples, except for one of them. Um, all invited to spend the New Year's at a cabin in the woods, basically, like a resort cabin. So it was a nice cabin. This book has multiple POV, and it follows not only our characters who traveled up there, but also the people who already work there. And it turns out basically everyone has something wrong with them. Everyone has their baggage, and it was very, I guess, realistic to a point. But then, when we start the book, we find out that one of these, we find out that one of the people was murdered. And we don't know who it is until, like, this far into the book. So, it was good. This book, I ended up giving it a 3 out of 5. Uh, it was enjoyable. There were some good moments to it. It was a good examination of the psychology behind people. But honestly, for me, it was nothing to write home about. It wasn't hugely overwhelming or whelming, really. It just kind of was. It was underwhelming, honestly, if I'm going with the whelming theme. But yeah, if you like horror and thrillers, this is a good one. This is a solid whodunit murder mystery, basically. So I can recommend it as far as that goes. But unfortunately, that's about it. I didn't like the characters. I don't think you were supposed to. Um, I didn't like how they handled situations. I didn't like really any of them. <laughs> so, it was interesting. It was fine. It got a three out of five. I read it. It was fine. The next book kind of went in the opposite direction, and I read Heartstopper Volume 1. I jumped on this bandwagon. This is by Alice Oseman, and I fell in love with these two boys right at the get-go, right here in this first volume. Um, this follows Charlie and Nick, who are two high school boys who are trying to figure themselves out. Charlie is openly gay, while Nick is closeted still, and they end up falling for each other, and it just 
they just become so adorable. And this first book really follows as Nick kind of comes to the terms with the fact that he might actually be bisexual or he might actually like guys along with girls. So it was really cute and a really great way of portraying this. The next book I read, of course, I had to continue it and I read Heartstopper Volume 2 by Alice Oseman. This one was just as cute. It's a little longer, but it was just as cute as the first one, if not cuter. Um, and so I don't want to do spoilers or anything, but there's a third one and I will be reading it hopefully like soon, like today or tomorrow. I really want to read it because these books just put me in such a good mood and I need the mood booster. So highly recommend these books about these boys by this lovely woman, Alice Oseman. So both of these, in case I, I didn't say, I don't know that I said it for the person, both of these got five out of five from me because I will pick them up and read them again. No questions asked. The next, the next book that I read, this one was an interesting one and took me quite a while actually to get through. And that was A Plague of Giants by Kevin Kiern. This is the first book in the series called Seven Kennings. I know that the second book in this series just came out not too long ago. Um, it's got a, a orangish color. That's all I know about it. But this series is a super high fantasy read. And it's very interesting because it's been a while since I've read a high fantasy like this. This is basically a multiple POV story. The main character that we follow in this story is Dervin, who is a friend to the ruler of the particular realm that, they, that the story kind of takes place in. And a bard named Fintan has come into the town proclaiming to be on a mission from uh, one of the goddesses herself and herself 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 in order to tell the story of the attack of the giants the interesting thing about this book is that um fintan our bard can actually uh he has what they he has a kenning that allows him to actually temporarily transform into a person is just a mirage type thing so he throws down this ball of black smoke and when it the smoke dissipates he is there but in the guise of someone else someone he has had direct contact with and has gotten like their words so he ha uses their voice and their image in order to tell their version of the story which is very interesting because this story um is the first in a series because this follows an invasion of giants so the giants have left their own homeland and they have come to this land and basically attacked everyone that they have come across and they have killed everyone they have come across as well um and no one really knew why it's just all of a sudden the giants came the giants attacked and the giants killed everybody and so they did find out the reason um kind of uh, but he's telling this story to a group of refugees, to a city full of refugees. And it's so interesting to see all the different points of view. And then we also get behind the scenes, what's happening when Fenton's not performing, what's happening like he has attacks on his life, the politics that they're being dragged through because of the story that Fenton is telling. And it's so interesting. It's so unique. Um, and I highly recommend this series. I did only give it a 3.5 out of 5, but the main reason for that is because it took me a while to fully understand what was happening, and I ended up having to switch over to the audiobook just so that I could keep the characters straight. Um, the audiobook is great because it's narrated by two different people, and these two people are amazing at voices. So I highly recommend the audiobook for this book, um, but... I, I do. It was very interesting. It was very unique, felt very, very high fantasy-esque, which is exactly what it was. So I'm glad that it felt that way. Uh, but you have everything from sprites to um, people who can talk to animals. You have people who can summon fire. You have orcs. You have giants. You have all sorts of different creatures. And you have the gods and the goddesses. And it's it's all over the place and it's quite intriguing. Um, so highly recommend. Very dense. If you like fantasy, I would recommend this. If you are new to fantasy, I would not say jump into this book. I would say read some lesser high fantasy before jumping into this would be my personal recommendation.
And the last book I'm going to talk about here is a book that I will continue to recommend to everybody for the rest of eternity because it's so good. And that is The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune. Oh, this story, I cried at the end, guys. I actually, actually cried. Uh, this one got a five, five out of five from me. And let me tell you why. This story fo follows Linus Baker, who is a caseworker who basically worships the rule book of uh, the agency that he works for. And then he is sent to the house in the Cerulean Sea in order to check up on supernatural children. So the agency he works for basically works with orphanages and um, foster homes in order to ensure that children are being cared for in the proper ways and that no child is um, abused or anything of the sort. And he very much goes by the book and he, but he is still able to form actual connections with the children, which um, makes it that he is very good at his job. Um, but he gets sent to this house, to this orphanage that no one has really gone to in years and no one really knows anything about. Um, they know a little bit about the kids there and, and the higher-ups know about the director, but they won't tell him much of anything about them. Um, so this story follows him as he meets these amazing and absolutely adorable children. Um, everyone from a gnome to the Antichrist himself, Lucy, is here. And Lucy's just adorable. He's just... He's so dramatic, and then it's like, Lucy, do you want a cookie? Yes, please. And it's the cutest thing ever, and I just... <sighs> it's so cute. Basically, I was trying to write down quotes, and what I ended up doing was I just ended up highlighting the last half of this book for all of my favorite quotes, because there were just too many to write down, and so I didn't write them down. I just highlighted them because I'm keeping this book for all of eternity, like I said. So, it is what it is. Um, there is some some drama stuff that does happen, but the whole idea of this is Linus is realizing what is actually important to him and what he wants to do with his life, and it is a happy ending. It is um, a gay romance um, with a bunch of basically adopted children and it's absolutely adorable and guys you just need to read it because it's so cute and it's so wonderful and yes yeah, so I could go on and on and on about this book I'm not going to but I could so keep that in mind yes so Yes, this one got a 5 out of 5, as it has from basically everyone from what I've seen, which, good choice, people. Good choice. All right, and that is what I have for you guys for here today. Short little video for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, now is the perfect time to give it a thumbs up and to hit that subscribe button down below. We post videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, and if you want to be reminded whenever we post these videos, hit the little bell icon down below. Now, until next time, guys, I hope you all stay safe, stay healthy, and keep reading. Bye! I need more coffee.